East Timor, the world's newest nation, is located in the oil-rich Indian Ocean between Indonesia and the northern coast of Australia. In 2002, this beleaguered island country achieved its independence after a 27-year struggle with an Indonesian military occupation that left the Timorese people in their homeland in a state of shock. Demetrio de Carvalho was one of hundreds of thousands of East Timor's indigenous people who had to flee from their homes to survive. In 1975, the Indonesian army invaded East Timor. I was only nine years old when my father was killed. I escaped to the mountains with my mother and three sisters, and we learned to survive in the jungle. It was extremely difficult. The military used napalm and bombs to try and flush us out. The population then was 750,000. 24 years later, in 1999, it had decreased to 400,000. Almost half of us had died from the attacks, from malnutrition and from disease. So the cost of our freedom was very high. But from that survival experience, I learned the importance of protecting the natural environment and the importance of a sustainable future for our country. Dimitrio has positioned himself and Haboras, his organization, at the center of the effort to rebuild East Timor with an eye towards both repairing the damage of the shell-shocked island and a plan for the future that will prevent such atrocities from recurring. He has lobbied to help pass and implement Article 19 of East Timor's new constitution, which guarantees an environmentally sound future for the people of East Timor. <laughs> According to Article 19, we protected many precious areas like this one that are in critical condition. The mangroves were almost entirely lost during the Indonesian occupation. With the help of student volunteers, we have replanted thousands of trees, including mangroves, to protect the hills from erosion and to restore the coastal ecosystem that is crucial for future generations. It is only through educating young people that they will develop a respect and appreciation for nature. They need to understand how to take care of the environment by working on reforesting the land, the hills, the valleys, the shoreline and mountains. That is why we offer our complete solidarity and support to Haburas in creating this program of replanting trees and restoring East Timor's natural beauty. Before the Indonesian invasion, Portuguese culture and language were imposed on the Timorese people. But for centuries, they held on to Titum, their language of 36 different dialects and many of their cultural traditions. The revitalization of these traditions is guiding Demetrio's environmental work. Terra Bandu, known as East Timor's traditional ecological wisdom, was a ritual used by tribal chiefs to prohibit hunting, fishing, cutting trees, and harvesting crops during certain periods of the year to allow the land to naturally replenish itself. During the Indonesian invasion, Terra Bandu was prohibited and the forests were decimated. Now that we've restarted the ritual, people can understand that they need to respect the forests and not cut them indiscriminately for firewood. The forests are coming back to life in areas where we now practice Tarabandu. Abundant resources such as offshore oil and gas reserves, as well as prospects for tourism industry, are crucial to East Timor's economic independence. Demetrio leads the call for East Timor to prioritize a sustainable path to development and one that supports a secure future for all Timorese. The Timorese people had tremendous solidarity during the 24 years of Indonesian occupation. So I feel that Timor does have a bright future. As far as my personal history, that was a very hard time, but we survived. I know that to gain our independence, we lost many things. However, I'm very optimistic about the future 
and will continue to care for and develop this nation. For outstanding environmental achievement for islands and island nations, the 2004 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Demetrio de Carvalho of Dili, East Timor.